Hey, what's going on, guys? I want to talk to you about 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, where it's talking about the weapons of our warfare. I want to um, kind of elaborate on what our warfare actually is and, more importantly, on what our weapons actually are and really are. I believe there's a lot of confusion on our weapons, and a lot of times we, we say stuff when we pray, we say stuff when we declare, we stay, say stuff when we intercede, and, um, and, and, and I don't think it's, it's all about that. It's not all about what we say. It's not all about the way we're trying to fight and we're trying to war. We, we have to remember that the warfare determines what's really important and what the enemy really tries to attack and really tries to get in the believer, okay? So where there's a warfare, it's obviously where the enemy is attacking that and fighting the most, right? It just makes sense. So let's see what the warfare is and then we'll determine by that what we really have to work on, work on and what's really important for the believer, okay? So it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. If you look at pulling down strongholds, um, it's 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 basically destroying uh, destroying fortresses, a fortress, something that's trying to keep you in one place and trying to stop you from moving around and uh, advancing. Okay, something that's trying to keep you bound pretty much and locked in. So you're destroying that. Our weapons destroy those fortresses. Okay, and we keep going. It says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So if you look at that, it's basically casting down or getting rid of arguments or um, logic, you know, logical reasoning that comes from the flesh, from the mind that attempts to think fleshly, which is the carnal mind, right? Um, because it's always against God, the will of God and the ways of God. The carnal mind is an enmity against God. The flesh lust against the spirit. So every time that your thoughts are against God, against the knowledge of God, against the doctrine of God, against the wisdom of God, which is really what it means. You know it's fleshly, you know it's carnal, you know it's not right, and something must change, okay? So the weapons of our warfare are not in, in, in physical body. They are used, they're used to correct your thoughts, to correct the way you think. Okay, to make sure that the thoughts that are going through your mind are in agreement with God, in agreement with the spirit of God that's within you, and it, they're not fleshly and not carnal because that's no good. Okay, so casting that argument is in every high thing, high thing, like a barrier, like barriers and walls that are built up so that it's hard for you to see the will of God, the word of God, the truth of God, the wisdom of God. Okay, and, and what's the opposite of the wisdom of God? The wisdom of men, the wisdom of this world. So a lot of people's thoughts, they, they're basically according to the wisdom of the world. And we're used to thinking like this so much that it kind of builds barriers and walls. And it keeps us from seeing things from God's perspective. In other words, the wisdom of God. Because we're so used to thinking this way. And, and every time we make decisions, we process information through this lens. The wisdom of the world, which are barriers, okay? And it says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, it's really talking about the mind and what's in the mind? Thoughts, imaginations, memory, right? So, the weapons of our warfare are weapons to help us with our thinking because the warfare is fought in the mind, in the mind of every single believer in this world. The warfare, the battlefield, it's in our mind. So that's where Satan's after. That's what he wants to mess up and corrupt and just basically scramble everything in our mindset in the way that we think, in the thoughts that are in our minds. That's what he's trying to get because as a man thinks, so he is. You see, 
The way you think determines the way you act. Okay? You have to get your thinking right. That's why Romans 12, 2 says, if you don't want to live like the world and you want to be transformed, you're going to have to renew your mind. What's that? Change your way of thinking. Reprogram. Reteach yourself. Okay? Because we lived as unbelievers for a very long time. Now we're believers and we have the spirit of God inside, but now we have to learn who we are and learn the ways of God, the will of God, and the things pertaining to his kingdom because we, be we belonged to a different kingdom before. Now we got to just change up and let ourselves learn who we are and learn the ways of God. And, and, and the Bible calls it the law of God, right? Our minds are... Our minds are supposed to be in agreement with the law of God, with the word of God, with the truth of God. And the flesh is it. So the flesh is always going to want us to do the opposite. But our minds, if we could get our minds in agreement with the things of God, now we can put to death the worst of the flesh because we'll be led by the spirit. We'll be in agreement with the spirit. We'll be in agreement with what the, the, the teacher, the Holy Spirit teaches us with what the teacher shows us in the word and what we, he brings to our remembrance and what he bears witness to us, which is the truth of God. Okay. So it's definitely the mind It's definitely thoughts and about thinking and imagination. And it says bringing down every thought into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? You bring down those thoughts, you bring them, and you lock them in, you make them captives, you enslave your thoughts to agree with Christ, with the gospel, with the finished work, okay? It says, bringing down every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We must enslave our thoughts to obey Christ, to obey the will of God, the ways of God, the truth of God. So where's the warfare? The warfare is in our mind. What's our, what's our battle with our thoughts? And what's our weapon? It's knowledge. It's renewing. It's meditation. It's, it's what you set your mind on, what you fix your mind on, what you set your mind on, what you ponder on. You know, a lot, of, a lot of us, we always love to quote David and how he meditated and thought about God and, and the law of God and all that. And, 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 and we don't actually do it when it's really important to do it. You know, we, we, we love to talk about the great men of God and what they did, but we fail to relate that to now and how it can help us. You see, when you're always thinking about the world, you're going to respond like the world. When you're always thinking about darkness, you're going to walk in darkness. Okay? When you're always thinking about the enemy... You're usually going to respond in fear or paranoia or panicking. we got to always think about the truth and what Jesus did and who we become in Christ as those who are born again and those who are sons and daughters of God. And by doing, by doing this, I'm telling you, by doing this, we begin to think differently because we begin to see scenarios and situations and circumstances through the lens of new covenant, the lens of we're born again, the lens of righteousness, the lens of truth, the lens of love, the, the lens of newness of life, the lens of grace, the lens of, hey, we're new creations and the spirits inside of us and we're sons and daughters of God. When we see things through that lens, we're able to respond differently, okay? And when we get a thought that doesn't agree with the spirit of God, we're able to more easily distinguish and recognize and pinpoint that thought as something that's fleshly and we're able to reject that thought and replace it with the opposite of it which is going to be God's way okay the flesh is always the opposite of the spirit the spirit against the opposite of the flesh so when we get those type of thoughts that are not in agreement with God well we just replace it with the opposite of that okay if you're, if, 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 if you're getting a thought of wanting to like tell somebody off, what do you think the spiritual thing is to do? Not tell them off, but say something kind of kind to them or just not even say nothing at all. Okay. What does, what does that point to? It points to the fact that you're learning how to respond now, like a son of God, you're renewing your mind to look more like Christ. 
And that also looks like self-control. But in reality, you can't bear the fruit of self-control. You can't bear that fruit if you don't think differently. Because the fruit is like the Holy Spirit's in you. And he's the one that's got the fruit. But a lot of times he won't be seen through your actions and through your words and everyday dealings if your mind doesn't allow it. Because the mind is like the steering wheel. So the mind has to be in agreement with what the spirit wants. And that's what walking in the spirit is. That's what being led by the spirit is. If your mind isn't in agreement with the spirit, you're not going to listen to the spirit. You're not going to follow his lead. You're not going to do what he wants. So renewing the mind, it just makes sure that when the Holy Spirit wants you to do something, that information, that knowledge, those type of things are already in your mind and you're already kind of prepared to say, okay, let's do that. You're kind of prepared already to say, oh, okay, I'll follow you. Let's do that. I'm with that. I agree with that. Let's act this way, Holy Spirit, because this is the son of God way to do it. This is the Christian way to do it. This is the righteous way to do it. This is the holy way to do it. This is the image of God, love way to do it. Amen. So renewing the mind is how to get the enemy because he's obviously fighting our minds and our thoughts for a reason. That's the warfare, our minds. That's the battleground, battle zone, battlefield, our mind. Why? Because he knows if we get our thoughts right, we're going to be able to bear good fruit. We're going to be able to walk out who we are in Christ. No longer going this way, going that way, wanting to do good, but not doing it like Paul talked about in chapter 7 of Romans, but actually doing good. How? Because now we're transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind. So I want to encourage you, okay? A lot of times people, they, they, they think they're using their weapons and they're like, you know, they're talking, they're praying and they're like, you know, I plead the blood of Jesus. I, I use the blood of Jesus. I, I sprinkle the blood of Jesus here. I, I throw the blood of Jesus all over my house and over my family. I send the angels of God. I send swords and I send fire and I send the Holy Spirit everywhere. And they think they're using weapons, and when it comes time to make a decision, it comes time to go through a trial and, and go through something tough and rough in the world, which Jesus promised we would go through. They don't respond correctly and then they wonder what happened. And then they say, oh, it's just too many demons around me. Oh, it's just too much darkness. Oh, somebody's doing witchcraft on me. No, they just don't think right. They're not using their real weapons. They're not correcting their thoughts, their way of thinking. So you could talk about the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the angels, the kingdom of God, fire, the shield, the sword, all these types of things and still not be using your weapons. Therefore, you're not victorious in the battlefield. The warfare is being lost because you're not using your real weapons. Get this right and you'll be able to see fruit. You'll be able to see a change. You'll be able to see effectiveness because the real weapons are correcting your thoughts. The real weapon is to correct your thoughts. The real weapons are thoughts that line up with the will of God, with the ways of God, and that agree with the Holy Spirit. And that's what being led by the Holy Spirit looks like. And when you're led by the Spirit, you look like a son of God. Because sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And that looks like the Son of God who walked it out for us to show us. And now we're walking like Christ. Now we're walking like Jesus. And that's what we're supposed to do. Amen. So I want to encourage you. Get your thought right. Get your thoughts right. Learn who you've become. Learn what you've received. Learn your inheritance. Learn your, 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 your new nature by because you received the Spirit in your heart. And if you learn what the Spirit brings to the table, the fruit He brings, you'll be able to be confident to expect those things in your walk and in your life. But you have to know what these things are. And you have to get them in you so that when situations come that you need them, you're able to look back and, and, and know that that's for you and agree with them and agree with the Holy Spirit and expect those things. And you're prepared to say yes to the way the Spirit wants so you're not like informationless and knowledgeless. And when, you're, when you don't have the knowledge of God, guess what happens? You agree with the flesh. You go with the fleshly way to do things, not with the spirit way to do things. So that's why thoughts, that's why the mind, that's why knowledge is so vital because that's where the victory is because that's where the enemy attacks us because that's where the lies are. And it's all about lies and deceptions. You don't believe me? As Eve. That's how this whole thing came about. That's why there's sinners everywhere. That's why the fall of man, lie, deception, got to do with the mind, nothing else. They didn't get possessed. They got lied to and they believed the lie and they fell.
Amen? So get your thoughts right because it's all about renewing your mind. If you're a believer, it's all about renewing your mind. If you're not a believer, it's all about being born again. Okay? Bless you guys. Remember where the warfare is at and use your weapons. Stop using Christian language that's been taught to you by people who don't live in victory. Live in victory the real way. And renew your mind and get the thoughts of God that agree with the Spirit. You'll be able to walk according to the Spirit. Amen? Bless you guys. Take care.